Our next bone of the upper extremity is the scapula. I apologize for the bit of a mess on this slide. There's, a, there's quite a bit of structure, so um, let's go ahead and get started with the borders. Um, so we'll just be writing these out so we can actually use black for all three of these, as well as the angles, unless you have a lot more colors than me, then feel free to do whatever you want. So um, this is the medial border. This may look like a left and a right scapula. It's actually an anterior view and a posterior view. But either way, this side of the bone here is facing the spinous processes, and it's the medial border. You can call it the medial border or the vertebral border. Uh, this side of the scapula is the lateral border, and up here is the superior border. So we have three borders. It's a triangle, so you can kind of figure that out based on which direction the border is, uh, which direction is pointing. So those are the three borders. Let's look at the three angles. So right here, we have the superior angle. We have the inferior angle. You can even feel that on your back. And then where the shoulder would be, or where the head of your humerus would be, we have the lateral angle here, the lateral angle. So three angles, three borders. That's kind of messy, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. I have a good standalone video for that using the model that one of my TAs made. You can you can watch that. I'll put it in the courses page. All right, our next structure is pretty uh, pretty large. It's the acromion. You can see it in all three views. That's the acromion or acromial process. There's a little facet on that called the clavicular facet, where the clavicle attaches, that you can see right there. Then we have the spine, which is only available on the posterior view, and it has three segments to it. So rather than highlight the whole spine, I'm going to highlight the three parts of the spine, and just know that all three of them together are the spine. So the crest is this flat surface here, all of this. And fill in all the white. Now it's tough to tell from this photo, but there's a pretty sharp lip uh, along the top and along the bottom. So the top lip I'll use a green for. That's called the superior lip. And the bottom is called the inferior lip. All three of those together are the spine of the scapula taken individually. It's the superior lip, crest, and inferior lip. All three of those are muscle attachments, so um, that's where the name comes from. So let's see, the spine was green, orange, hopefully you can draw neater than me, and purple. The inferior lip was purple, the superior lip was green, and the crest was orange. Okay, now to the three very big fossa on the scapula, which are muscle attachments for your rotator cuff. This first one here is called the supraspinous fossa. And that's really the only view you can see it in, so we'll leave it at that. It's called that because it's above the spine of the scapula. Below the spine, you guessed it, infraspinous fossa. There it is, another rotator cuff muscle attachment for a muscle called infraspinatus. So supraspinous above the spine, infraspinous below the spine. Then on an anterior view, so the part of the scapula that actually rests against your rib cage, this whole area here is an attachment for subscapularis. I'm sorry, I didn't even say its name. It's called the subscapular fossa. And let's also color infraspinous fossa here. All right, this next one has a great name because it's pretty accurate, the smooth triangular space. Smooth triangular space. Our next structures are notches. The first is called the greater scapular notch. 
This one, really an inferior view would be best and we don't have it. So instead, we're going to label it right here. You'll see a good view on the other video, the, the 3D model video. And that's called the greater scapular notch. The lesser scapular notch, which you can also call it the super scapular notch, is right. It's actually not the best view, but there it is, a little notch right there. Super scapular or lesser scapular notch. The next one is another really big process called the coracoid process. Lots of muscles attach here. It's pretty tender if you're trying to palpate it yourself. It's just medial to the head of your humerus. There it is. All right, now the neck and glenoid fossa. Let's do glenoid fossa first. Here it is. Glenoid fossa it can also be called the glenoid cavity. That's the part of your scapula that articulates with your humerus and forms your shoulder joint or glenohumeral joint. You can also see it here to a lesser extent. The neck is just below the scapula. I'm sorry, just below the glenoid fossa right there. That is the neck of the scapula. You can also see it here. Okay, down to our last two structures. We have the supraglenoid tubercle above the glenoid fossa. So that's a good name. And we have the infraglenoid tubercle. These are muscle attachments for muscles in your arms, your biceps and triceps. All right, I know that was a lot, 20 structures, but um, just try to get your notes labeled, try to get a basic understanding of where things are, and then watch the video on the model, and you should be okay. Thanks, guys.